Hi, welcome to Sean's RC. This video today I just wanted to tell you about the build with this Tamiya Rising fighter and just a couple of the issues that I come up against and, and just in case you're having the same issues that I did. <clears throat> it was a, pretty, a relatively straightforward kit. Now this is the first kit that I've built in probably 30 years. I had a Hornet um, that I built when I was about 14 years old and then I got out of the hobby for a long time. I raced that when back in the 80s um, when Tamiya cars were quite popular and till the you know the team associated RC10s and the Schumacher Supercats and, and those kind of cars come along and just left Tanya in the dust, Tamiya in the dust but anyway so this is the first kit that I've built in a long time. One of the issues that I had and you can see on here is I put the wrong shock on the back so you got slightly smaller shocks on the front to what's on the back and I just I didn't notice I just for some reason thought they were all the same so I've got to take that shock off put it here and vice versa put it there the other issue that I had with this was actually getting the engine the 540 silver can engine there to mount you get you get like a the mounting part and then you get a little gasket type thing that you put in and a, and a couple of screws but it's like the screws are not long enough and I just couldn't get it to grab there wasn't enough left on the screw to actually grab the motor geez it took me about half an hour to actually get it on there and the first couple of times I did get it on there um pretty much just with a little tiny wiggle fell off but I just had to persevere and persevere and I thought it's like the screws just needed to be a touch of, um a couple of millimeters longer but I got it on there in the end you've just got to get it right and make sure you're not the screws not hitting a little bit of the gasket um, to get in there but bar that it all went together pretty well um, I've got some uh, metal ball bearings and that coming for it so I'll be putting them on another thing that that I had was a bit of a silly thing really was I was short of one screw and because you only get enough screws for the actual kit and I'd actually put the screw that I wanted I can't even remember what it was for now in the wrong place so basically I was about a third of the way through the car I'd done the the chassis and I basically had to pull apart all of what I'd done screw by screw till I found the right screw with the right thread on and the screw was actually exactly the same size as the one that was meant to go in there but it had a different thread pattern on it so it took me ages to figure that out so that held up about an hour and a half really of trying to get it done so you just with these time your kits you have to be very careful that you match everything up and make sure stuff goes where you, it's meant to go otherwise you've got to build it and then pull it apart to find the right part um, and put it in the right place so it was just little teething problems that you could probably expect considering I haven't built one of these in a long time I put the stickers on I didn't do a very good job of it there's a bit of a bit of a crease I actually put the stickers on here on the tail fin round the wrong way these two stickers here I was just sort of right at the end of it I was tired I was a little bit rushed but I managed to peel them off gently peel them off I got a little pocket knife underneath and I peeled it. and they can actually come up you have to be very very careful pulling them off um, and putting them back on but you can see the sticker bent over there it's actually quite an art in, in getting these stickers on um, but yeah I think I'm probably going to run this car um, I want to get a sport tune motor for it I've got metal bearings that I'm going to put all around then I'm going to buy some radio gear it doesn't come with an ESC so I'll have to buy that um, you know, hobby wing one's about $30 in my country. Probably if you're in the United States, it's probably half of that. But, you know, it'll probably, for in my country, will cost me about $200 for the radio transmitter, you know, the, the servo and the ESC to get this going. Um, a, a sports tune motor, you're looking at about $50 
time you still put them out, sort of the re-release ones. So I'll, I'll get this up and running, but yeah, it's probably going to be one of the only buggies of time here that I'm, that I'm going to run. I've got my Hornet there that that's just going to stay on the shelf because that's a lot of good memories. That was my first RC, not that particular one. That's a re -re. Um And I've, I'm have i going to get myself a Midnight Pumpkin kit that I'm going to build. I probably won't run that either because they're a great car, but you have a lot of problems with them, like the the um, the body mounts tend to snap off all the time, so you need to get aluminium ones. In my country, it's hard to find all that stuff. It was... It, it, hard to even find metal bearings you go most of the hobby shops that we've got here everything is just sold out that's including cars anything you want you can still pick up kits but i don't know about where you live but in my country you know like these are quite common hornet the you know all the hopper range the grasshopper um you can get midnight pumpkins you can get lunch boxes blackfoots Monster Beetles, those are quite expensive, Monster Beetles and Blackfoots. But when you start getting into things like the Hot Shot, they're just, just for the kit, it's, you're looking at about 500 New Zealand dollars. Um, Tamiya Foxes, there's still a few of them around. If you see one, I'd recommend buying it because I reckon they're going to die out. They're getting quite hard to get. They call them the Nova Fox, the new re-release time your fox <clears throat> they were a good car they were probably in my opinion time is best two-wheel drive buggy so you can still find them though i've seen them they're about 280 to 300 new zealand dollars so i'd like to have one of them in my collection i might even just get one and keep it in the kit but yeah that's just some of the silly things really that i did wrong on this car got the shock ground the wrong way i will on a rainy day change that around um, you've got a cable tie up the swing arms and that there, but, um, yeah, so it was a lot of fun building this car. It took me a lot longer than it probably should have to build, but it didn't take long at all. I'd say probably all up five or six hours to build this car. Just, I did like an hour every night when I get home from work and sit down and it's relaxing. You know, so I had a I had a good time building it. Really, that was the only problem that I found was like I say, the motor mounting the mounting the engine was quite hard. It's like those screws are just not quite long enough. But I got it in the end. You just got to persevere. You might think there's something wrong with the with the kit, but there's not. It's just it's just the way it is. The screws are only just long enough to just grab it and just hold it there. So yeah. I'd, I wasn't too keen on that, but it's it's in there pretty tight now, and just the shocks. When I pulled them out of the bag and, and lined them up, they all actually look pretty much the same, but they're not. Um, yeah, slightly smaller ones for the front, as you would expect, and I should have known better. But anyway, no major problems. It all went together pretty well, pretty simple. You know, there's no electrics in them. They've only got the engine, so you don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. Um, pretty quick build cheapest kit you can buy in my country rising fighter and it's the best of the hoppers so yeah i'd, I'd recommend it and yeah great car